Uh, morning, everybody. Oh, yeah, it's still morning, half eleven. Welcome back. Uh, as promised, we're going to go live. I'm um, ready for all your questions and things like that. So, if you've got any questions, store that, give us a shake. I'm um, not going to do so much tips and things today. I'm going to just do question and answers session. Um, we get a few more people watching, and we're fire your questions over. Any questions you want, just send them over. If I can answer them, I'll answer them. Just about all subjects. I particularly want to talk about the BDO, Troy Nations, and the UKAD bids for Katie Darts and the future of our amateur darts. Um, talk about anything. Talk about. Um, I'll see if I can get my. I've got a big screen behind me here. And what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and see the questions come up on my big screen rather than on the phone. Because when I'm doing a live video on the phone, it's very hard to read the questions as you scroll up through. So I'm going to try and work out how to do this. Uh, live. I'm not sure yet. I'll suss it out in a minute. Right. Morning, Wayne Thomas, Delwood. How are you? Hope you're all well on this lockdown. Got an hour to myself at home. Thought I'd kill an hour by just having a chat with you lot. Stubbsy. Hello, mate. Nice to see you. Are you missing the darts? Because you're a comps man. You are. You love your comps. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable saying drinking my tea. Um, any questions, darts related, or anything else for that matter? Uh, we're having a little banter. I'm going to run quickly over the tips I did the last three or four videos. Ben Lewis, morning Mikey. Morning Ben. Nice photos you're doing son. And you know, you're keeping up the practice as well. Good boy. That's what you want to be doing. Afternoon Cliff. Morning Cliff. Um, how is it over in Wales? Beautiful day today. Wear your sun cream. Trust me from somebody who knows. I've had skin cancer because of the sun. Lo lovely hot day today. Bank holiday Monday. Every Saturday gardens and barbecues, blah, blah, blah. Wherever they're watching. Jenks is back. Hello, Jenks. Um, yeah, wear your sun cream, folks. Tip of the day. Um, I'm keeping safe, mate. I'm very well. As you can see, my hair's getting longer. Miss is going to cut it all off tonight. Hopefully. She's a hairdresser, so I'll be all right. Um, I lent my clippers. I've got a brand new set of clippers for my birthday in April. Lent them to my brother-in-law, because he, he's in lockdown, and uh, his missus wanted to cut his hair, so I lent them to them. I'm one of these people I don't like sharing my clippers, so I haven't had any clippers for a month. My well, missus has got a set now, she bought some yesterday, so I'm going to get me air cut. Uh, county darts, come on people, ask me some questions about county darts, what's happening? Uh, Darren Kerr, right Darren, down Burnham, after I've done this video I'll be doing your quote sir. I'm going to try and do, do a bit of uh, paperwork this afternoon. Unfortunately it's part of my job, I have to do the paperwork. I've got three quotes to do, Darren being one of them. Uh, let's talk about the uh, old JDC virtual challenge. Anybody got any comments on that? Uh, I've got lots of thoughts on that one. It's good. Jonesy, Simon Jones. Hello, Simon. Cheers, mate. Let's be back on the board again today. If you ever want any other photos, give me your email. I'll send them. Cheers, Ben. I don't really need any photos. Um, I only tagged you in one the other day because it was my mate's pub. He took a photograph of, and I thought they'd like it. So I, I tagged you in that and sent that over. Um... Do you think this season county will be scrapped and start fresh? This season's over, Graham. Absolutely over. Uh, we've been told as a county uh, to be starting again whenever this lockdown's over. I don't think they're. Um, I don't think they're. Uh, they got any plans on finishing this season. I think we're where we are in the league is where we're staying. Um, afternoon, Nathan down in Sunny Torquay. Hope you're well down there. Miss you lot massively, Sean Anstey. Hello, Sean. Um, county darts. Um, it's a bit of turmoil. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if the Troy Nations are going to be running the county darts. We don't know if the BDO. I'm pretty sure the BDO won't be running the county darts. They've pretty much had it. They're bankrupt. They're trying to get us to pay for a season and have a free season next year just to get our vote to get us back in. Paul Pence, morning, Mike. How highly rate this Wayne Allen on the county circuit? Man, he's unbeatable. You can't beat Wayne. He, last county game, he was 3 0 down, still 1 4 3. Morning, so I just hope you and Mrs. Norton are both well. We're fine. I'm going to try and get my video live on my big screen here. I don't know how to do it. Anybody got any ideas? Because the questions are scrolling through my screen too quick. Simon Murdell, I thought you weren't. Myrtle, I thought you weren't interested in this. Of course I'm interested, Simon. I'm just not aiming to be a top professional. 
like a lot of people I know are. Um, I'm very interested in darts. I still play darts. I'm actively still playing. I still will be pushing and pissing people off for many a year to come. Don't panic. Yeah, they still owe for us. Tom and can't see us getting that back. No, you're going to lose money there, mate. BDO, fucked. After him, Paul Rogers. Got my sausage dog here. You like sausage dogs, you got one. He's over there asleep on the sofa at the minute. He's been out in the sun. I know you've got one. How do I get my bloody live picture on here? My live video on this screen? Let's refresh it, see what happens. Um, cheers, mate. I did my first 12 dart against Ryan Camp. Ben Lewis, this is. Against Ryan Camp. I hit 580. I say, not giving up. Going to keep going. Your yeah, darts are unbelievable at the minute, mate. Keep it up. I don't know if they're unbelievable. I can't believe what I'm throwing. I had a practice yesterday, actually. I don't practice, as everybody knows. I'm a terrible practiser. Um... I probably had an hour yesterday, which is more than I normally do. If you have smart TV, turn on and should let you transfer. I don't want to transfer it because the, the, I can't get my camera to work on my smart TV. It's not a TV, it's a computer. It's a very, very modern, posh computer. I, my missus is really good on it. I'm crap. What I'm trying to do, <coughs> I've got Facebook on my phone and Facebook on the computer. I want to watch the, the screen with the volume down so I can see the comment scroll out the side which it was doing when my missus left me about half hour ago hang on ah i got it i just got to catch up on that right the comments should come up now i'll just enlarge that screen yeah comments are coming up now on the side that's perfect i can look at the screen um okay well, hello mate what phone is it's all sorted now so i've got it on my big screen behind me I've got the camera facing me on my iPhone, so I can see the comments scrolling up. Um, right. Well, we'll just talk about Ben, won't it? Ben. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Yeah, what did he get? 580 is. First 12 data, 580 is. That's good darts, mate. Um, it says Mike Norton is watching. <laughs> I'm sure it does, not he? Um, yeah, 580 is. I don't know what you played to, but 12 darts, yeah, it's fantastic, mate. You keep that up. It's all about focus darts. Um, it's impossible to focus all the time, especially when you're playing at home. <laughs> like, on, like on Facebook, I didn't realise you could see my trousers. Um, yeah, focus is massive for me. You've got to be able to focus at the right times. For me, I focus massively when I'm in a, in a dark comp or anything like that. You don't see me being very chatty at darts comps. I'm actually, I'm focused on the job. Um, you know, I've got a mi I'm on a mission, and the art of pra good practice is to try and get your your focus and your your, um, your your serious head on at home. It's very hard. But how did you play Ryan Camp yesterday, Ben? Just out of interest, did you play him online? It's online darts. Hi, right, Josh. All right, mate. No, haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're well. Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 the hardest thing to do in darts. Um, that was a twelve. It was out of twelve legs. They're not amazing. Yeah, it's twelve legs. Five hundred eighties and twelve legs is fantastic darts, Ben. Don't don't knock yourself. Right, Simon Murdo, do you find the JDC tournament fun or frustrating? Well, that's a cracking question because it's both. That's that's what makes it really good. Um, you can practice and practice and practice, and you you're not really focusing like I just said about um, and you're hitting good scores and then the minute you press that Facebook like button bang it gets you and you hit a crap score I've hit a couple of 12 1300s the last couple of days so it ain't been too bad but I have practice and I have it over the 2000 mount, 2000 mark which is Gary Arden my friend from Bristol has got the world record I don't know if he's watching this but um, he did tremendously at 2025 I think he's now the world record holder I, I will tell you now Gary I have it that three over that three times now in practice i've just got to do one live i'm gonna get you a record boy don't you worry it's a great game and it's keeping everybody really interested it's the most interesting game out of all the online games that's going on at the moment i won't play them because there's a lot of cheating going on things but um i'm loving the fact that this jdc live everybody's getting involved and the big thing i do like about it more than anything else is People's attitudes when they throw shit throws. They're cussing, they're swearing, they're blaming everybody. They're 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 uh, fucking, oh, they're, they're up in arms. They're tutting. It's hilarious. It's so funny to watch. I normally only watch the last twenty seconds to see what score they hit, but some of the people that are funny, like Mike Knott and people like that, I just laugh at his comments. 
it's great. But it keeps you on your toes. So anybody who's not doing it, get on it quick. You've just got time. Darren Davis there hasn't done it. Come on, Darren, you lightweight. Let the world see how good your practice is going because I know you've been practicing like mad. Hi, right, Rick. All right, buddy. Stocky. How's Ricky? I know you put a post on yesterday about your pub. It was in the paper and all that bad press. So there's no such thing as bad press, they say. Any publicity is good publicity, but I don't believe that was some shit asshole causes trouble in one of your pubs. Um, I know Ricky's struggling massively because he he changed his career. He was a, I think he was an insurance broker or something, and he took a massive step to run a pub, and he gambled on it being um, successful. And it's it, he's turned the pub around, to be honest. And uh, it's a life and soul, and he's he's missing it like mad. And I talking about the old lockdown. I don't think it's going to be too much longer, folks. I think um, I think that. By the end of June, this is my personal opinion, I, I've got a bit of inside knowledge on the fact that I study what's going on and I look at the news closely and I can see how the government... Uh, we're actually peaking at the moment in North Somerset and, and Bristol. We're actually peaking at the moment. So we're on a slope, a slope that's going down and uh, it's not going to be too long, I don't think. I think by the end of June, which is four or five weeks away, I think by the end of then, the lockdown will be over. And we can all get back to some normality. They won't let the kids back to school unless they've got a plan. Um, their industries are dying. Grand Atlantic hotel chain went bust yesterday. Massive loss to two and a half thousand people lost their jobs. Um, you know, it's it's massive. It's the industry. The, the country won't survive without these companies. Shearing's travel went bust uh, into bankruptcy. All these sort of big companies. They can't let this carry on. Although it's killing people. Every year, 30 or 40,000 people die from the flu. It hasn't even reached that yet. So it's a very minor illness, but it's very, very transmittable. And we all just got to be a bit careful. Take the advice we're given. Um, and I think we'll all be back to normal by the end of June, hopefully. Fingers crossed, eh, guys? Because we all want to get back in the pub. Morning, Mike. Andy Collins. Morning, Mike. It should be a plane load of Bristol lads for the JDC virtual, don't you think? Well, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of Bristol lads on that plane to Gibraltar come in November, December time, if it's still on. Um, as anybody knows me, I've advertised my comp that was run, supposed to be running later this month. That's been cancelled. Um, we put the date back. We tried to get another few dates in uh, November. Just Wayne Wayne Adley is one of the, the organizer. He's tried to get a uh, tried to get a rebook for November time, but the nearest we'd get was something like the sixth of December, which we thought was too close to Christmas. So we've just scrapped it and do it do it next year. Hopefully, we we'll get a load of people booking. And they give them something to look forward to next year. It's a massive two-day event. Big prize money up for grabs. I've actually booked myself into a tournament yesterday for, for Old Spag up in Birmingham. Two-day event on the 6th of December again. Okay, how are you? Sean Burke. Hello, Sean. Um, people should be setting up tournaments for September. I agree, yeah. Let's get all back up and running. But people who set up tournaments and people who, who uh, are the organisers, it's a big risk for them. Uh, taking money in and things like that and not and having to cancel the events so they're just being on the edging on the side of caution at the moment I think which is not a bad thing Ricky Arden's watching Ricky Arden whatever happened to you I remember you I used to speak to you about four months ago what happened you just disappeared off the face of the, face of the earth you have that I know you're not big on Facebook so um, yeah so hopefully we'll get some toilets back up and running uh, get the people like Stubbsy back happy because he's only happy when he's smashing people at tournaments. Um, what other comments have we had there? Do you think it benefits players' real game? Yes, I do, Simon. Playing that JDC virtual, it definitely benefits because it puts them in the spotlight. They get a couple of hundred views on their on their on their attempt. They get uh, the pressure of it being live, and you'd be surprised how much the nerves kick in. Um, you know, when you're when you're on a video and it's live live stream when everybody else is watching you. Um the nerves kick in and I think it's gonna benefit them for when they do get out into the proper pub. Uh I've never been a nervous player personally. I've I've always been quite a confident person, so I'm off now, mate, going to get some more photos. Take care, mate. See ya Ben, take care mate. Keep up the good work. Um 
yeah, I've always been really confident. So when I walk in a pub, I don't I don't think about the nerves too much. It's always exciting. Obviously, it gets your butterflies going a little bit. If it didn't do that, I don't think I'd play. And anybody who says they're not nervous at all is lying. Um, we all get a tiny bit. <coughs> some people I see shaking. Some people, you know, it affects their game massively. Uh, and this is all about the concentrated focus and the practice routines you put in at home to get you better. Um, let me see what Ricky put on there last. Uh, Dave Kerr, there might how are you going? Yeah, ice things, that's me. Yeah, all good, thank you. Daz Reynolds, who do you think will win the home tour, Mike? Outright. To be honest, Daz, that's Daz Reynolds. I haven't really been watching it, to be honest. Um, Jacko's back, good old boy. Um, yeah, I don't really know how it's going. I haven't, I've been flat out with work, believe it or not. Uh, I've only had a couple of days off, today's one of them. Uh, I don't even know who's left in it, to be honest. I haven't been watching it, so I can't comment on that. Sorry, Daz. Is it the final tonight? I don't know. Are you back to the day job? Yeah, man. I haven't had a day off, Simon. Oi, oi, wacko. <laughs> My mate PB calls me wacko. The reason he calls me wacko is when I did play darts when I was about 19, 20. My missus nagged me and nagged me and nagged me to go and watch Michael Jackson. And I was a bit of a... Not a fan at all. I uh, eventually gave in and I bought some tickets and I took her to see Michael Jackson at the Milton Keynes Bowl. And I come back and he was brilliant. I've got to be honest, one of the best live, live performers I've seen. I've seen everybody. Um, and uh, I come back and I was spouting on about Michael Jackson, how good he was. <laughs> Pete Butler started saying, you're a wacko fan. He's, he's called me wacko since I was 19. I'm now 40, 57. So it's been a long time nickname, but he's, he's the only one who calls it me, thankfully. I've won a prize, apparently. I answered a question on one of his quizzes. Oh, you're welcome. I've got a prize for you calling me a C-U-N-T. Take care, mate. Yeah, no problem, pal. On serious note, concerning the West of England, have you heard any more from the committee? As I'm saying, there is no deadline. I back your idea of the Tri-Nations. Do we know anything about the other counties? Well, I want to speak about this. This is Andy Collins. This is very close to my heart. I play for the West of England. We've got, a, we've got a committee and they all seem to think that when the, the BDO have the AGM, we're no more. Or when we have our AG, uh, AGM, we're no more. We won't know no more. It'll be all done and dusted by the time the BDO have their AGM. People are voting now. Counties are t making their opinions um, known. Scotland's gone, Tri-Nations. I think the Tri-Nations is the best for us. BDO's offering a little bit of a cheap year next year as long as we pay this year and basically get their vote get them back in seat i think they've gone i think it's time for fresh change um i personally ask questions on our west of england page and i've asked the committee for answers and we haven't had any and i don't think saying nothing is the right right thing to do now we've had the options put on there and i've read the options to i'm blue in the face and the bdo are pretty much well, we did a little poll on our page, and I think the BDO have had one vote, and I think it's about 20-odd for the Tri-Nations, and three don't care. So it gives you a bit of a general feeling of what the rest of the players are thinking. You know, one person out of 60, 70 players voting for the BDO tells you the BDO's over. The BDO's over anyway. I'm 99.9% .9 sure of that. So I think you're barking at the wrong tree if we, if we think we're going to be going BDO route. We're going to then going to have a choice, as a county, to choose between the PDO, Tri Nations, or this UKAD by the sounds of it, the, the three main people bidding to run County Darts. I think Tri Nations is very good. There's, there's obviously always good points and bad points. Um, and I think the best deal for us as a county is the Tri Nations. That's my personal opinion. Now, I'm quite happy that everybody else has got their personal opinions, and I want them to have their opinions. I don't want me to drum it down their throats. Hence why we're asking the questions from the committee to see if we can get some answers. Unfortunately, our committee aren't the best at coming forward on, on social media. They, they prefer to do things the old-fashioned way. They want me to email a question, and then they're going to email me an answer. Now, I don't, I don't do emails very much. Um, I don't want to be asking questions off one person. The reason I created the Western England Players page is so we could ask questions and they could answer them. 
and lightways back and it was sort of for information for communication to make it simple for us to talk about fixtures uh, selection things like that that uh, it's it, you have to have certain things done on the committee behind closed doors which i understand fully but this is affecting our whole county darts and i think they should be talking about it that's just my opinion and i know that a few people do support what i've said we just need answers and we're not getting it out of our committee at the moment so it's a bit annoying for us uh, i don't want to say they're burying our head in the sand and waiting for things to happen but that's pretty much what's happening we need to get a plan in place for our county now for all three scenarios if whether it be the tri nations the bdo or the UKD. I know that our senior members on the committee are BDO through and through, but I think they realise, I'm pretty sure they're not stupid and they've read it all and I think the BDO are going bank, well they've gone bankrupt on one arm of their governing body. They're not backed by the WDF which means they've got no world championships to play for, they've got no England team to, to for you to try and get into. So everything on the BDO front is pretty much had it. So the only way forward now is is the Troy Nations because they've got the back end of the WDF and and that's massive to a county because we play every month. A lot of people play for fun, but a lot of people play for, you know, trying to improve and, and, and try and get that, um, maybe an England spot. But we've got a, 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 a great example, a young player from Somerset. I don't play for Somerset, I used to. Uh, Justin Hood. He, he made a few TV appearances just before the new year, before this virus started and all that. And he's on the up. He's he's absolutely buzzing. You know, he's he's had his bit of five-minute fame. Um, you know, he's done really well. And he wants to be involved in that kind of thing. He wants to go to the things that's going to get him on telly. He wants to get to the, hopefully get an England spot. He's very good. He's good enough. Um, all these sort of things. He's not going to get that opportunity within the BDO anymore. So... Are Somerset thinking Tri Nations? I don't know. I don't speak to anybody down at Somerset anymore. Well, I'm, you know, I, I do speak to obviously a lot of players, but. Um, morning, Darren. There he is. Darren Davis has arrived. When are you going to do the JD, JDC virtual challenge, Darren? I need an answer. Come on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what's going to happen to Justin Hood? I've got a uh, mate who plays for England who's down at Devon. Uh, what's going to happen to his career? What's going to happen to Devon? He plays for Devon and they go into the BDO, if they stay in the BDO, that's his England spot gone. You know, it, it's not something you've got to think about lightly. We need to have a plan of action. Uh, morning, AD. I think that we should personally go Tri Nations and see what happens there. There's uh, Ollie Norton. I know Grandad. I know Sweetheart. I'm going to message you after this hole, so I need to speak to you about something. All right, Trev Williams, long time no see. Right, I missed a couple of questions went flying by there when I was chatting about the old West of England. Uh, I hope I answered your questions, Andy. Um, I'm open. I did. What do you think will happen with the PDC table? I think the PDC will be up and running. I think they're making plans to do it so that it's, it's all kept separate and they, they can. I think uh, Michael Van Gogh put on Facebook or somewhere on social media this morning about the 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 um, uh, the, the world competition they do. Trying to get that on because some places are open and some not. People need to get darts back on, don't they? If you play well later in the year, will you consider Q skill? Simon Moody again. Um, Simon, I you're hearing it now for the first time. I if I play well enough, come November December time, I went at a Q school. I went at a Q school <coughs> because I love the challenge tour. Um. You obviously go in there with the intention of trying to win a tour card. I want to, you you want to win a tour card, but I'm one of these people. If I don't win a tour card, I'm quite happy playing in Challenge Tour. I've got thousands of friends up there that I'm missing. I purposely took this year out because it was getting too much. I was going to, it, I was playing uh, Super League darts. I was playing County darts. I was playing Challenge Tour, and I was doing events and all these kind of things. And it just got too much. So I needed a break. You know, I'm not. I can't be selfish. I've had to concentrate on work more. But I do consider myself, you know, I'm a 28 to 30 average player, as everybody knows. Yeah, obviously sometimes I get a lot more than that. And if I can hit my A game at the right time, like everybody goes to Q School 4, you have your dream day. I mean, Steve Brown did it last year. Steve Brown lost his tour card several years ago. And I've, I've known Steve for 
all my dieting life. And I think he was resigned, never getting a tour card again. And his playing days of professional were over. And he, he basically went to Q School at the last minute last year to take his son, more than anything, to give him encouragement and everything else. And he turned out he had the dream day and he got a tour card. And it's progressive. Obviously, with a tour card, you get to the UK Open, you get TV appearances. Fantastic. So everybody's got their chance on the day. So if I play my A game at the right time, yeah, I think I'm possible. It's a potential I could. But I'm quite happy uh, going back into the Challenge Tour next year and enjoying uh, another season on the, the old tour. Meeting up with some old mates because I'm missing them. And it, ironically, the year I'm having off, <laughs> they haven't played, so I haven't really missed any darts. I mean, I think I've played the same. <laughs> Darren Davis went to Q School. I didn't go to Q School. And Darren hasn't played a challenge tour yet. He missed the first one because it was right after Q School. And um, he hasn't, he, I haven't played, he, he hasn't played one challenge tour this year. What we need to do now, we're in the, nearly the end of May, so we're halfway through the year. And I haven't missed a game yet, in theory. So if I'd had gone to Q School this year, I'd have been in the same boat as Darren. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I am going to consider it. But it all depends how I'm playing come November, December time. Um, I'm going to try and get me, uh, me head round uh, getting some practice in. Because if if it's right what I'm seeing on uh, Facebook and other social media sites, how everybody's practicing, I'm going to be back in a queue massively. And uh, obviously we've got to take into a a bit of a count, a pinch of salt and everything else, how uh, people's averages are, because there's a lot of, a lot of, I'm not saying cheating, it's just, it's very hard to, to play darts when you've got a blurry screen and things like that. And that's why it makes the JDC challenge absolutely foolproof. I absolutely love it, because there's nowhere to hide, it's, you, you, you can do all the practices like beforehand and you take it all really seriously. You get to that, press that Facebook like button, boom, and it, it, you'll go ratchet. But that was, that's what makes it fun. And I, I know I'm enjoying, like I say, I'm enjoying all the sarcastic comments after everybody's played. A lot of banter going on. John Rogers and um, people like that. They're, they're cussing themselves. Might not, like I said, it's hilarious. Really enjoying that. I think Steve Brown's just joined us. Right, Steve? Great job on the old JDC, mate. Right. Let's have a little look at these comments. Do you think match play will go ahead? I'm not sure about that. So, darts is too old-fashioned. No one smashing show media bringing views to the sport. That's your opinion, Simon. Um, I'm not into music like you are. So, each of their own. You know, most of the people I associate with are darts orientated or football or something like that. Thank Mike. I think thanks, Mike. I think it's just a bit of lapse in making the right decision for us as a team, as we have a great squad. And like you say, we need to make a decision. We have got a great team at the West of England, and I just think that if we leave it too long, it'd be we we don't want to be um we don't want to be leave. You know, leaving it too late. I think we need to get some sort of plan of action in place now for whatever happens. Nathan Richards. Morning, chubby. All right, Ginge. Nice to see you on the straight and narrow again. Nice, good boy. That's what I like to see. AD Adcock. Morning, Mike and DD. Uh, are you too old to get... <laughs> too old to get a card. Are you too old to get a card? Not trolling, just being realistic. Probably. I don't mind. Dave Kerner, Mike, I'm off now to have a bit of practice before I play my second attempt at JDC. Stay safe and take care, mate. No problem. Daz Reynolds, who is the best caller, do you think, on a PDC? One thinks George Noble, another thinks Paul Hinks. I think it's Russ Bray. Well, I, I, I know Paul Hinks personally. Um, and uh, I don't really know George. I love Hinksy. I think he's great. He's got such a serious face. He's not like that in real life. Got such a serious face when you see him on TV. Um, I don't really know Russ Bray, and he's never done. Paul Hinks has taken he, he, in his role in the, in the PDC. He's not just a caller, a referee. He he's part of the Q School setup with a lot of others. He's part of the Challenge Tour. He he's one of the um, what we call board managers at the Challenge Tour, and here here operate eight balls at a time. He's always very approachable. I like Paul Hinks. Russ Bray doesn't do that, nor does George Noble. So. I'm going to say Paul Links. I like Paul Links. Um, and look, uh, Ethan Richards. Look at him, he's a lad, isn't he? All right, keep the questions coming, folks. I don't know how long I've got. I get about an hour on this Facebook, don't you? Probably turn me off. Michael Danny Boy is watching. Another PDC official, Steve Long. All right, Longer. Golly Harris. Steve Brown. Hi, Steve. 
Yeah, we talked about a bit about the JDC virtual earlier on, Steve. In case you missed it, you might have to go back on the start of this video. And we'll just say what fun it is. Um, and, it's, and it's serious as well. There's places up for grabs. Um, I very publicly put it out there that I was going to smash the world record and then follow a day my mate, good mate Gary Arden smashed it. But I'm still after it. I'm still after it. I will do that. Nathan Richards is the sexiest ginger. Yeah, you certainly are, man. Nice to see you off the beer, Nathan. Doing well, boy. Keep it up. Because I ain't doing you no favours. And you did say to me you was going to be off Facebook, so I don't know what you're doing on here. <coughs> Ricky Palmer. I had Russ Bay at the pub just before lockdown. What a decent bloke as well. Incredible shout on MC. I'm, listen, Rick, I, I've, I've bumped into him a couple of times. never spoke to him. And I'm sure he's a massively decent bloke. And, and he's a good shout because obviously everybody's got it on their bloody app, haven't they? I listen to Russ Bray in my head when I'm practising. 108, non-stop. Who's better, Ryan or Ricky Palmer? <laughs> Nathan, fight, fight, fight. Who's better? Well, you've got to be honest, right? Ryan has Ryan got to be a pro who won his tour card, and Ricky hasn't. So that, in theory, if you look at it in sensible terms, Ryan's a better player, but that's only on the day. I mean, I don't ever underestimate anybody. And you're putting two brothers against each other as if the one's worse than the other or one's better than the other. It's not the case. I'm sure Ricky's give Ryan a bloody good hammer at darts many a time. And I'm pretty sure Ryan's done the same to Ricky. So, a bit like me and Darren. You know, me and Darren have some massive epic battles. Obviously, I always win, unfortunately, for Darren. Uh, he's going to laugh now, isn't he? No, I don't always win. And that's what it should be about. If you was playing somebody who was smashing every week, it'd be no fun. For, for fuck's sake, don't ask much Facebook and drink, yeah. Nathan Richards, Ricky's better fact. Nathan Richards, Darren's better fact. Well, that's your opinion, isn't it? I don't mind. The proof of the pudding is what you win. Not about how you think you are. What, what are people won? You know, um... You could go on about Ricky and Ryan to your blue in the face. Both lovely lads. Get on both. I get on well with both of them, and lots and lots of other dark players in Bristol. Um, Ryan Ryan's proved himself. He's 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 on his tour card. Uh, professional dark player. Been on Telly UK Open, same as me. Um, fantastic. You know he's got. He, if if he retires tomorrow, he's achieved more than ninety nine point nine percent of dark players that will ever achieve in their darting career. Um, Ricky's Ricky's done other things. Ricky's won games. I know Ricky. He's a dangerous, dangerous player. Nobody wants to play Ricky. Nobody wants to play either of the Palmers on on their A game. Um, but this is what Darts is good at. It brings the best out of you, doesn't it? When you're playing good players, I love them both. Ricky Palmer. I was Nathan Richards five to ten years ago. Fuck off, Rick. You were you were Nathan Richards five minutes ago. <laughs> I'm only joking, pal. Do you think the top guys will be back without a crowd? Yeah, I think I think they will. I think they're going to organise Ricky Parry won lad draw. I know you won lad draw, mate. Thousand pound first prize. A top man. I know they did once. I bumped in the bloody. Um, who was it? Justin Pike beat me in the final, didn't he? Who's your top three favourite? Mine is Bob Anderson, Taylor, and Mike Gregory. Right, I've said this a few times. My my heart is cheesy. Because I, I get on really well with him, and he's my, he's one of my friends. Oh, I would call her a very good friend. Um, but I love Adrian Lewis. I think Adrian Lewis is one of the best naturally gifted dark players out there. He's had a bit of a struggle the last couple of years, but he'll be back. I've got no doubt about it. Bob, I played darts with Bob two or three times a week. Um, <laughs> you know, Bob's been there, done it, got a T-shirt. I'm also a big fan of um, Peter Wright, believe it or not. Very flamboyant character. I love his attitude. It's not so much they're darting a bit. I just like their attitudes. Van Guren's obviously one of the better play best players ever. So Taylor and Barney and all that. But Peter Wright, although he's just won a world title, I just love his attitude. He doesn't really care. He, he Well, it comes across that he doesn't really care. And I think it's great. Afternoon, Dom. How's the practice going, boy? Um, yeah, I think... I love watching Peter Wright play. I just think he don't. I've seen, he's lost games. He's been smashed. He's won games. He's the same person straight afterwards in a in um the interview. He just said, "Oh, better player one." He's just very calm, cool, calm, collected about. It. So I like Peter Wright, Lewis, and 
<coughs> obviously my old mate Chiz. Love them. They're all class, aren't they? Dave Keenan, best players are Taylor, Peter Wright, MVG. Well, that's, everybody's got a different players. They decided about Taylor, Barney and Lim. I wouldn't say Paul Lim was the best art player I've ever seen. He's obviously achieved more than a lot of people. I think if you want to know, if you're looking at uh, what they've achieved, you've obviously got to look at uh, MVG, Phil Taylor, Eric Bristow. They've achieved more than most, and they're ambassadors at the top level of our great game we love, darts. So that's Reynolds. My top three are Asma Hill. Right, Aspen and Anderson. Well, I'm lucky enough to know two of those personally. Nathan Aspen is a friend of mine, and so is, is that Gary Anderson? Yeah, Gary Anderson. I've known Gary. They're all great players, aren't they? You could go on and on and on. There's still a lot of players. I like. Do you know what else I like? I like Steve Beaton. I have played him. Um, he beat me six 0 quite publicly. I, beat, I had a hundred and eight average, and he beat me six 0 I've said about that story a few times, and uh, I think in that. 6 nil drubbing, I hit 380s and he hit 4, I think. So 780s in 6 darts, 6 legs of darts. Probably the, oh, was the most shell-shocked I've ever been after a game of darts. Uh, I didn't do too much wrong. wrong. Um, every time it was my throw, he went 180 away. And it pretty takes some catching up, that does. He finished pretty much first dart. I don't know what his average was. I think I had 100 and... I think I had 160, he had 108, something like that. And uh, but I just love watching Steve Beaton throw. Has anybody watched Steve Beaton throw? It's such a natural throw. Darren Davis is top three. It's Darren Davis, Mike Norton, and Ricky Arlen. Come on, the salt house boys. That's why I like to hear. And Steve Beaton's still going and playing good. And Steve Beaton's been around for a long, long time. Um, worst haircut in darts, obviously. Uh, it's got better, but it was terrible. Looking back at it, looking back at some um, the old ones. Who's better, Nathan? Is that uh, Gilman Price or Aspinall? Well, they're very similar, actually. Uh, I, I think Gilman Price is a better player than Nathan, but I think Nathan's got more of a future in the game, personally. What about Alan Glazier? Remember him? He used to dress in black, didn't he, Bart's? PB? All at the back, Manny Black with a black tash. Bob Anderson and no M. Michael Danny Ball. Who's the best player you have played, Mike? Who do you think? Who, on, who do you think, why on earth have you not made it as a pro or semi pro on the circuit? The best player I played that's not a pro or a semi pro on the circuit. Well, somebody talked about Wayne Allen earlier on. Wayne Allen's one of those buggers, he just sits a hundred every single time he throws a dart. He just throws tan 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 tan. It's always boring. But he's so underrated and he's got nerves of steel. Although he just drink eight pints of soda first. So I I would say something like uh Ricky Arden's uh one of my more favourite local players. His attitude is the worst in darts, but his ability is the, one of the best. He's such a natural thrower. And if Ricky could get his darts arm and his darts brain ever synced up, I think we'd all have to bugger him pack in darts because he's got such a potential ability and it never comes out because of his mental strength. Uh, that's my opinion. Rick, sorry if you're still watching. I don't know if you still are or not. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a natural, and he's never made it as, as a big time or anything anywhere. But he's so dangerous. You d you don't want to play Ricky Arden on his A game. Nobody does. But Ricky's very beatable, um, and you don't have to play mind games with Ricky. He beats himself. <laughs> you don't have to do it for him. Ricky's ability is second to none, and uh, he's the most natural player I know. He, he makes it look so easy. <coughs> Simon Medell. Darren Davis is the best you've played. I don't agree there. I've played a few of the top pros. And uh, back in the day, a couple of years ago, when I was just getting into darts, I was absolutely over the moon to play people like Mark Dabridge and Steve Brown, you know, notorious pros from Bristol. Notorious in the sense that they've been around forever. Um, I know it was a like, highlight of my darting, darting life when I had to play Mark Dabridge for the first time. They all said he was so good and all that. And I relish the challenge. Um, and the same with Steve Brown. And obviously, as I got through my dark career, I got better. I ended up playing all these top world professionals, you know, Lewis and MVG, uh, not MVG, uh, uh, 
Barney and people like that. And I played a lot of top top pros there. And I, if I don't ever play darts ever again, nobody can take that away from me. I've really enjoyed every single one of them. They've all been a different challenge, different ways. Um, but I've been, I'm not I'm not ready to retire just yet. Sam Allen was a class act. <laughs> Sam Sam Allen's still a class act. You know, and another two most underrated players, Sam Allen and Gary Arden. You don't want to play these people regular. You, they they just destroy you. They're just class, and they don't need me to tell them that. They're very quiet, unassuming dart players. You just turn up, smile at you, have a pint, and then smash you at darts. I love it. But that's hopefully what they people think about me now. Hopefully, I'm like a silent assassin, just turn up and play. Um, we talked to Darren the other day about comps, and I forced him into entering a comp in December that's going to come out in Birmingham, which we're looking forward looking forward to. Um, but my last two comps I've played and I've actually won. I won the Froome Open and the the Highbridge, um, I think they called it the Highbridge Masters or something. Oh, Gripper. Afternoon, mate. Is there anyone that you would like to play but haven't had a chance to yet? Yeah, Van Gerwen. Never, I've, I've been on the same practice board with him and thrown behind him and things like that. But I'd love to play him in a game. Um, uh, I don't think I'll ever get that chance now, unless I do do well at something and maybe get to the UK Open or something like that and uh, get drawn against him. How close you come to the JDC Virtual Challenge when you have not recorded it? Well, I've hit 2,000 three times, over 2,000 three times. Uh, that's Michael Danny Ball's question. Um, yeah, three times I've hit over 2,000, but <laughs> it's easy in practice. But I am after Gary Arden's record. Don't you worry. I have not finished with this yet. I think I'm on my third padlocks unlocked, so I've got three to go. So I presume once I've done those, I won't get a chance. So I've got a few weeks left in me yet. And I'm going to have a little half an hour practice today before I do my JDC challenge. Lady Atcott, great chat, mate. Off, well done. Never at all, mate. Take care. Take care, Lady. All the best, buddy. Yeah, JDC challenge is a thing of the future, isn't it? Who else then? Who else would I like to play that had a chance? I've never played Peter Wright. I've never played Michael Van Gerwen. But I've played most of the other top guys. So, um, yeah, I think those two. I like Peter Wright. I think he's a, he's a good character for the game. You need characters. If everybody was really boring, m my daughter said, you'd love a chat, don't you, Daddy? Yeah, I've got a big I've got a big notepad here. I'm just reading off the notepad. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, I like a chat. I chat to all my mates' holes. This has any bit of fun, bit of banter. Been doing the tips and the cookery and all that. Cooked a chili con carne this week. Well, I didn't have a tin of tomatoes, which I normally put in my chili con carne, so I was a bit stumped. I didn't know what to do. Well, I didn't fancy getting in the car because, you know, it was nearly, nearly ready. So I looked in the cupboard and I found a, a bottle of, um, a jar of Dolmio <laughs> bloody spaghetti bolognese sauce. And I read the label. It's only tomato sauce, isn't it? So I tipped that in. And what a banging bloody chili con carne that was. I'm going to do that again. <coughs> Pete Bartlett, tell your mates of how you were the fastest of the Atletico runners in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre back in 1988. Well, that was funny, 1988. Bloody hell, that seems like an age ago. Right, I was a footballer back in 1988, and my mate Pete Bartlett said to me, can you come and do this? Half? It's like an half marathon, I think. I'm not sure. I think it was, I think it was a half marathon or, or, or 10 miles. I'm not sure. But they called it the St. Valentine's Day Massacre because... Basically, it was all around, all around Western. There wasn't really much flat running in it. So basically, it was along the deep sand, up through all the woods, across the sand dunes in Sand Bay, up and down the bloody rock face cliff, and back through the marshes, back through up the woods. Kept out of Western, they got a big sand hill you had to go over. It was a bloody nightmare. Well, we were talking about it, and a, a, a few people on that. Because um, I was a fit footballer, and I was proper fit then, I didn't train for it. And... If you don't train for something like this, we're asking for trouble. Anyway, a couple of lads from our football team entered it, uh, one of them being Ian Burns. And uh, we had a bit of a side bet, so who, who would finish ahead of the other. We weren't going to win the race. 12 tough miles, thank you, Pete. It's 12 miles, so pretty much half a marathon. Um, and it wasn't on the level, trust me. Anyway, I got halfway round, and I seen it on telly where they, they get to this drink station. Now, I'll tell you, before I start, the, before I start that, the night before, this race was on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and I lived on the seafront at the time, and it was just across the road from my house where I lived, on the flat where I lived. 
And uh, I went out on a Saturday night with football lot and got absolutely pissed. Got in at two o'clock in the morning with a dirty kebab. And I, thought, I sat there and I ate this kebab and I thought, oh shit, I promised Pete Butler I'd do this bloody race in the morning. And I thought, oh no, that won't happen. Anyway, I went to bed with a... <laughs> I woke up about nine o'clock a, on a Sunday morning and uh, I get Pete Butler knocking on my door. Come on, mate. Come on, wacko. We've got this race. Oh, shit. I literally stumbled out of bed. I put on a pair of boxer shorts that had Valentine's Day hearts on them for the Valentine's Massacre. And I staggered across to the beach. And literally, as I got there, they said, right, ready, go. And off we all run. And the first couple of miles, I sweat pissing out of me. It's all a beer from the night before. I haven't trained once, not been on one practice run. Apart from my football training, which I did every week, I haven't been on one run. Anyway, I get halfway around the track. And I see not on telly when <laughs> they run up to the drink station and they grab a drink. And they drink it as they're running. Wow. Well, I grabbed this drink. I was desperate for a drink. My mouth was dry as a you know what. And um <laughs> went like that and I took three steps and the fucking glass was empty. So I looked up for oh, there'd be another drink station in a minute. Boz there, bugger. Anyway, it gets to the three quarters of the way around and my football manager's halfway around the course and he said Come on, Mike. He said, Burns is ahead of you. Come on, he's in you like a couple of minutes ahead of you. Put a big effort in. And I'm really proper struggling now. I was naturally fit, but I didn't <laughs> I didn't really prepare for this race. Anyway, so I'm really putting an effort in now. And I've got like about five miles to go. And I think, right, I'm going to catch Burns. I can't let that wanker beat me. So I really put a massive effort in. And uh, anyway, I staggered over the finishing line. And I got a, <laughs> I got a recommended... Oh, 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 oh. I don't know, a, 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 very, a very good time. I got a certificate for being sub 95 minutes. I did it in 94 minutes and one second. I remember because I got the certificate upstairs in my scrapbook. <coughs> and an hour and a half to run 12 miles in my condition was pretty decent at the time. And uh, I was sat there and I crossed the finishing line. I can't remember the finishing line. I was so dehydrated. A lesson to be learnt there. And... Uh, my father-in-law came over and he, he he gave me a Mars bar and I scoffed it down and the sugar brought all the blood back to my body and I, 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 I was in danger of passing out, to, to be honest. Anyway, I sat there for about half an hour just get, gathering myself back together and getting get a bit of energy back in my body and I see fucking Burnsy trotting over the line. <laughs> fucking football manager lied to me, didn't he? He was about half an hour behind me. Anyway, I put a good time in through that. So, yeah, that was my little one and only effort at running. And if Pete Bartlett says I was the top in the athletic team, good. Well done. Good fun. I missed a load of questions there. Don't forget me dodgy singing. That was a, that was a laugh, that Bart. So I enjoyed that. Not. What is your favourite double minus tops and double 10 and double 18? I'm not all right on doubles, actually. I haven't got really any doubles I don't like. Um, obviously, nobody likes threes and sevens and odd numbers and nines and things like that. But I'm all right. I'm, I'm quite happy going for them. I'm always a 16 and 8 man myself. Um, I love double top. Um, double 10 used to be my favourite, but I always seem to go, when I go for double 10 now, because I like double 5, which is, you ask anybody who knows me at plays darts, Jimmy and Darren, they're all tail, I do not miss double 5. So if I go for double 10 now, I tend to lean to go inside the double rather than outside of it. Purely, if I've got a dart left, I'll have a go at the um, double 5, and I'm, I'm pretty confident on double 5, I don't know why. It's just one of those things, so yeah, I'm, I'm all right on most doubles. Um, <laughs> fucking running I don't get onto running I couldn't do that now Bart so I couldn't walk 12 miles now although I'm really physically fit from building and things like that um, yeah I couldn't run up the road if you ask me anyway I think I better end this we had a bit of banter haven't we? a bit of a laugh I was hoping some people would come on I was hoping I was looking for a couple of people in particular like um, Marcus Knappman's watching has that just come up Marcus I want you to ask me some questions. I didn't want to ask a question. I wanted to ask you a question. I was hoping you'd come up because you're obviously a Somerset lad. What do you think about the BDO, Marcus? Um, what's going to happen? Do you think there's any future in the BDO? Do you think it's over? Do you think Tri Nations is the way forward? Marcus and Becky do a lot for Somerset County Darts, and they're they're more in the know than me. I'm just a dart player. I don't, I'm not on our committee or anything, so I don't get to know what goes on behind the scenes. But I was I was hoping Marcus would come on, and. Uh, Hopefully, maybe type in an answer or something. Or what do you think's happening, mate? We're all a bit lost with all this, aren't we? I think the Tri Nations is the way we've got to go. Personally, I don't know what Somerset think. Um, it's a tough one at the moment. 
Now, I see Marcus is watching, but I don't know if he's watching it from the start and he hasn't got to this point yet, or he's watching it live from now. Lacey Skinner. I haven't seen Lacey Skinner for, well, a good few years. Right, Lacey? Remember the good old days when we used to play darts in the old snooker place, Snooker City in Bristol? With Archie's mob. What's happened with Chris Archery? Maybe seen Chris Archer for ages. He's give up on his darts a little bit. I hope he's, hope he's all right. I'll, I'll give him a phone call, actually. Should get Peter Wright to come on. We're only big guns. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing I have. This lockdown, I've been friends with him for a while, I think, on Facebook. R Rapid Ricky Evans. Any of you know him? Uh, this bloke, I, I thought he was a bit of a joker at first. I thought, is he taking a piss? This bloke is genuinely a really nice guy. Um, I don't know him personally, but I'm obviously friends with him on Facebook. And I see his videos and his posts and things like that. Fuck me, this guy's funny. I can't stop laughing at Rapid Ricky Evans. He puts posts on on Thursday night about him and his brother, I think it is. Go out and do this thing for the NHS clap. And they do something stupid every week. <laughs> if anybody's friends with Ricky Evans, keep an eye on that. That's a good laugh. Uh, I love, uh, that's one, one good thing that come out of all this. I'm friends with um, Ricky Evans on Facebook. And uh, he's commented on a few of the things I've done. And he, he, he looks... I wish I knew him personally. I When I get a chance... Hopefully I do see him at some sort of comp or something. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself to him and make friends with him because I like his character. I think he's fun. And and all this doom and gloom that's going on, you've got to have a few people make you laugh. And Ricky makes me laugh. I love him. I think he's great. And I'm looking forward to trying to make friends with him. He might tell me to piss off. Uh, but looking at the character that he is, I don't think he will. So looking forward to seeing you, Rick. If you're watching this or something later on, hope you hope you see it. I'm going to leave, leave you or leave you. I, uh, Marcus is watching, but I don't think he's answering, so unless somebody's... He's probably watching from the start, so... Uh, yes, Matt Edgar is on YouTube channel, and Jack Langston. Yeah, I do I do follow Matt Edgar. Matt's very informative, also a funny guy. You've got to take him with a bit of pinch of salt. It's all a bit tongue-in-cheek with Matt, but he's a very serious, very serious uh, coach. And uh, if anybody wants to improve their dots professionally, properly... He's the man to go and see because he knows a bit more about it. Uh, West of England players poll. Uh, Chris Wasser just put that out. Yeah, I talked about the poll earlier on, Chris. Um, I think we had one BDO vote last time I looked at it yesterday and about 20 for the Tri Nations. Um, yeah, if anybody from the West of England can help us, um, give us a clue what you want, people. That's what Chris is asking for. You know, we all, we all need to know what's going on. And I think you can't leave it too late because it might be too late to do anything about anything. So now's the time. While we've got this little bit of lockdown period, come on, June, let's get out of the way, get back playing darts. I'm missing my mates. Um, right, I think I'll leave it there because I've been waffled on, like my daughter said, for far too long. Um, my missus left me one job to do, and that's Ubering, so I better get out bloody done before she gets in, otherwise I'm in right shit. All right, folks. Uh, it's only banter, it's only a bit of fun. I don't care if you'd like it or not. It's just a bit of banner. Take care, people. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.